ACC is out the door, out the window. But where should FSU go? The Big Ten or the SEC? That's what we're here to talk about today on the latest episode of Plant the Spear podcast. We asked and you answered. So we're going to go over that in today's episode. So thank you guys for tuning in for another episode. Michael, thank you for joining me. How are you, my friend? I'm ready to get into this one. This is going to be a fun episode. Man, I've been looking forward to this one ever since you released the Twitter poll. Man, we saw a lot of engagement, a lot of passionate debate, uh, people on both sides of the spectrum of, of what yeah. they want. And so, man, I can't wait for us to talk about this. Yeah, and to back the train up a little bit, I was a guest uh, spot or whatever. I won't say star. I'm not a star, but a guest spot, <laughs> you know, on, a, on another podcast that basically asked about realignment from Florida State's yeah. perspective. And so I gave my thoughts on on the issue, and there was a lot of debate in the comments. So that's kind of where this whole subject came from. And I thought it would be fun to make a whole show, but I wanted to get you guys' opinion. So we did a poll, and like Michael said, I mean, it, it blew up. We had a lot of input on this. And, man, I mean, it ranges all over the place where, where people were at. So we're going to get to those results in a minute. But you know what, Michael? No matter what conference you're in, you can get great FSU gear Always, from, always. From today's sponsor, Alumni Hall FSU. So check those guys out, 1415 Timberlane Road in Tallahassee or shop online at Alumni Hall FSU. Use code SPEAR to get 10%, and we appreciate you guys supporting those who support us. If you're watching this video, drop a like and subscribe so you can stay connected with us as well. And before we get into it, if you're watching this on YouTube, where do you want Florida State to end up? What is your opinion on the matter? Because we're going to approach this from two, two sides of it. What do we want, yep. and what do we think is the best fit? So you guys Correct. drop in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. Where do you want to see Florida State end up? So, Michael, let's get into this. First, let's just kind of start with we're going to cover a range of things, like we said, coming at it from multiple angles and a bunch of different aspects, travel, competitiveness, money, things like that. So we're going to kind of dig into this one. But let's start with the fan poll, because I'm telling you, this thing blew <laughs> up. I didn't expect to get this big of a response because it hasn't even been up for 24 hours yet. But the fan poll. It's all Big Ten, but overwhelmingly, it's, wow, it's overwhelmingly landslide, 68 percent. Slanted to the Big Ten. Only 32% preferred the SEC. We had almost 2,000 votes on this poll. Lots of comments, lots of input. So that's why we thought this would make such a great episode. So I think let's first start with what do we want? You know, yeah. what, what, if you had your choice, if, you know, if ESPN wasn't affiliated, if the money wasn't an issue, what do you want as a fan from a fan perspective? And for me, kind of what, what, got things heated the other day a little bit was I, I said that I thought maybe the fans kind of wanted the sec just because you have the regionality aspect of it. You have a lot of games that you can get to away games. You have the aspect of those opposing fan bases traveling back to Tallahassee, because we know that's a problem in the ACC outside of really Clemson, right. not a whole lot of the opposing fan bases pack out dope for right. our home games. And so like, that's, there's a lot of aspects, especially the, I think the travel really is the crown jewel of the SEC argument, but also the crown jewel of the Big Ten argument, which I found through a lot of the comments is rightfully so people hate ESPN and the SEC and they just don't want anything to do with it. Now, I think before we jump into it, I we should probably go and, and be on record here saying that we're with you. We're with you. Screw those guys. We don't like the SEC or ESPN. Down with the four-letter network. Exactly. So we're not fans of them either. So we're not biased either way. I actually kind of can't stand the SEC. But we're going to take a full picture look at it. Because right. with with ESPN now owning the sole rights to the playoffs, you pretty much, I mean, unless you miss the playoffs, which is what we don't want, it, it's unavoidable to have some dealings with ESPN. So right. just keep that in the back of your head as we go through the show that ESPN is going to be involved in the picture regardless. Right. So I think for me as a fan, and we'll elaborate on this in a second, I think, I, I and I said this in, in the comments on, on the poll, I think my head says the Big Ten. I mm -hmm. think it's the better move for a university standpoint, for a program standpoint, for the long run. I like the the better TV partner with Fox. I think you have more, you know, obviously academic opportunities in the Big Ten. It's a nationwide conference. You can expand your fan base, all those things. I think my heart would still like to play in the SEC because of all the just the regionality aspect, the natural rivals. Man, that LSU FSU series, while it was a missed opportunity to to have it in Baton Rouge and Tallahassee, right. that was an extremely Man. fun you know series. And and I can tell you from like a, a a content creation standpoint, 
I mean, our engagement was through the roof was awesome. <laughs> when you when you get the when you get the SEC fans to come out of the woodwork. So, you know, that's just some of my initial thoughts. But I'll, I'll just you know, from a fan perspective, not from what not not as if you're President McCullough, <laughs> where would you like to see us end up? Yeah, as a pure fan perspective, man. I, again, I'm with you. I I I see the I can see the benefits of the Big Ten from a from a holistic point of view. You're looking at the entirety of the university, everything, not just athletics, but from the whole spectrum. The Big Ten makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But, man, I don't want to travel to, to Wisconsin. <laughs> I don't want to go to Missouri. Oh, not Missouri. I don't want to go to Minnesota. I don't want to go to – Yeah. I'd love to go to Michigan. That's true. I would love to go there. I don't want to yeah. have to travel all the way out to, to Washington to see a game. I want to go to Alabama. I want to go to Auburn. I want to go right. to Texas or Oklahoma. I want to go to Georgia. Like, I want to go to those games, right? Like, and so that's why for me as a fan, if we're just talking strictly as a fan, I just want to be in the SEC. I don't like ESPN. I think they are of the devil. I really do. I think they're corrupt. I, I There's so much about them I don't like. Right. But also, man, I do like the regionality. I do like the closeness. I do like the ability to be able to travel to home games if I like. I want to. I do like the natural baked-in rivalries that could be created yep. um, by going to the SEC. And let's just be real. Football in the South is better than football in the, the rest of the world, uh, college football at least. Um, it's just a different animal in the SEC. Right. And so as a fan, I'd rather be in the SEC. Right. I agree with that. And let's first start. We'll kind of go with a little topic by topic here, just to kind of okay. chip away at things to, to kind of set the stage for people. So we'll first talk about that travel aspect, traveling yeah. to away games, fans traveling to Doak. I think the first thing you have to consider is if you go to the SEC, I mean, it's it's going to have a massive impact on the economy in Tallahassee because yes. you're going to get that return trip. So let me just set, let me just share some numbers with you. And guys, we're not going to go super stat heavy on the show, but I have some numbers that I think you will definitely find interesting because I went through and, and travel is a, a big talking point of this, obviously. Now, before we get into these numbers, the FSU administration did say they are not, they understand the, the argument. They get it right, from a fan's right. perspective. They're going to go to whichever one has the best interest for Florida State and the best offer, whether you like it or not. Right, like, right. Get on a plane, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I think we we have to approach travel the way we approach it anyway. It's from a common fan, right. per, you know, a common fan like Ireland. It's a great opportunity for mm -hmm. those that can make it. About 80 percent of the fan base probably can't make it. Right. I myself drive seven hours one way, almost 500 or about 400 miles to Tallahassee for home games. That's yeah. a long friggin That's drive. Long. I do it eight hours. Every home game is eight hours, four hours there, four hours back. Majority of your fans don't live in Tallahassee. Right. And so like you have to account for that, too. It's already a drive to home games. Now, looking at some of the travel aspects. So with the Big Ten, and it's newly expanded format. And, and keep in mind, everything we talk about here is going to be as it is currently with the currently. new teams added. Right. So the Big Ten, your average travel time is 20 hours by car and 1,283 miles. That's your that's average. From, that's from Tallahassee whew. to your average opponent. Now, I will say I went back and did the old school Big Ten before the four new additions. It's 15 hours and 923 miles. Still. So it's still a long way. So you have zero Big Ten teams under 500 miles from Tallahassee. Wow. All 18 members are currently over 500 miles. Your farthest team is Washington at 43 hours, <laughs> 2,834 miles. And your closest is Indiana at 11 hours, 761 miles. Yeah. That's a lot of travel. Now, for comparison, the SEC, your average travel time would be eight hours or 610 miles. Wow. Half of the Big Ten. You have 10 schools that are within a 500-mile uh, radius. Uh, six schools are at 500 miles or more. So you have 10 schools within 500 miles compared to zero in the Big Ten. Your furthest is 15 hours, 1,015 miles. That's OU. OU, okay, yeah. And then the closest is UF at two hours or 148 miles. That's right. So, But, you know, Auburn was right there, and That's Alabama's right. right there. So you have a lot of those close ones. So I get it. Like you can say you can just hop on a plane and all that stuff. Again, that's expensive, man. Not Have everybody you flew lately, <laughs> right? Like not everybody can do that, and so I think it the regionality is important because you know something that we were talking about two aspects, and then I'll kick it back to you is is first off those who are going to travel to you and you traveling to them. So if you know if we join the Big Ten, I would right. love you know kind of tying this into the game day atmospheres. I would love. 
to go to a Penn State wideout. I would yes. love to go to the big house, Michigan, yes. see 100,000 plus. Ohio State looks like a Did great you? atmosphere. Yes. You're probably – you could make those a little more often. But when you get to those West Coast teams, which I think is something that, that we were talking about before the show, when you look at the Big Ten, most of your desired road games are the farthest away. Correct. Whereas the SEC, most of your desired games are the closest. Are you know, closest. one of their one of their farthest is Missouri. Who wants Who to go to Missouri? that? Who's going to Missouri? <laughs> Probably nobody. Like, of course, you're going to want to go to Texas and OU, but right. most of the other teams are really close. And so, how often are you going to make that trip to Ann Arbor, to Columbus, right. to Washington? Right. right. More than maybe once to experience it. And in turn, how often are those fans going to travel to Tallahassee more than once just to see what it's like? And so, I think. That is something when you talk about just from a, a local economy impact, I think it is huge for an advantage for the SEC. Now, right. I will say this, and, and I'll kick it back to you. I think with either one of these conferences, with you joining them, it is going to be such an instant, massive upgrade to oh, your yeah. home schedule. Oh, and, yeah. and, and as a season ticket holder, this has been a kind of a long standing issue with, yep. with having a not a great home slate. You get Michigan, you get Ohio State, you get Washington, you get USC, you get LSU, Alabama, all these teams as home games, you're going to sell out dope right. every single week. So right. that is a fair argument, too. I just think, man, when you if you're going for travel alone, this isn't even – I mean, it's not even a conversation. No, it's not even a conversation because when you think about it – okay, so this is the way I look at it. Yes, you're going to get, you know, Penn State, Michigan – um, Ohio State at home. You're never going to get them all at home at the same time. So right. one year you'll probably have maybe Penn State at home, and then you'll have the other two on the road. Maybe the other years you'll have Michigan at home and the other two on the road. Maybe once in a blue moon you might get one, two of the big three in the Big Ten on the road. But then you think about, okay, so you have to go out to Washington. You have to go out to USC. You have to go out to Oregon. Listen, I used to live in California. I have mad respect for USC, that football program there. I went to a lot of their games. Uh, going to watch a game in the Coliseum is not like going to watch a game at Michigan or going to watch a game at Ohio State or going to watch a whiteout at Penn State or going to anywhere else. It's just not. That game day atmosphere at USC is nothing to write home about. I, right. Neither I is UCLA. To, neither UCLA. I used to go to those games. They're not. There's, and I'm talking about as of two years ago. I used to go to those games when Lincoln Riley first got there. It's just not. And so, but when you talk about traveling to Old Miss, which is known as like one of the best game right. day atmospheres in the country, we talk about traveling to Tuscaloosa. When you talk about traveling to Auburn, when you talk about traveling to Mississippi State, even with all the annoying cowbells, you <laughs> right. talk about going to Georgia and they're barking at you all the time, right? I mean, there is not a game day atmosphere in the SEC, maybe outside of Vanderbilt. And who's going to that one unless you want to go to Nashville? Right. There's not a game day atmosphere outside of Vanderbilt in the SEC that's going to be terrible or bad, right? Right. And then yep. you think about having that in the SEC, if you play, if you're in the SEC, your home schedule is going to look like having Bama and LSU and Georgia and Florida and Vandy and or not Vandy, Old Miss and OU and Texas. I mean, like your home schedule outside of like the powder puffs you play will be sold out completely. Right. It'll be such a hot ticket. And if you're a season ticket holder, man, you're going to be holding some money, money yeah. in those tickets. <laughs> right. If you're trying to sell yeah. them because you can't make it or whatever. I'm just saying you're not going to get that same effect with the Big Ten. Now, this is not a diss to the Big Ten. I mean, they got some right. great teams in there. But at, when it comes to travel, both coming to Tallahassee and going away from Tallahassee, it there's no comparison that the SEC is a better choice based on travel. Right. And I, I think you're right because – you do have some big teams that would come to town. If you get right. USC and Oregon and Washington and some of those teams, but like you said, you're probably not going to get a lot of those year in and year out. Right. You still have Illinois. You still have right. Purdue. You still have Northwestern. Like, right. I get that people will argue that the SEC is top heavy. You have Georgia, Alabama, LSU, those good teams. But, you know, still, like when you go to Auburn and even if they're, you know, six and six or whatever, they're still packing that stadium. Now I know Nebraska right. does the same thing, but not a lot of the, not a lot of the big 10 stadiums do that. And just from an, a game day excitement factor, you know, you have, like we talked about the big, the big matchups in the big 10 are exciting. 
it's the middle tier that I have a hard time being excited about. Like I just, I know this is going to sound biased or whatever, but I, like I can't get excited about a game against Rutgers, against Illinois, against Northwestern, against Purdue, against UCLA. Like half of the conference is kind of like, you know, right. whatever. Right. But the SEC, you know, like you said, outside of outside of Vanderbilt, pretty much every game is going to be a big game because it's it's kind of like you have maybe all meat and one potato whereas like you have right. a little bit of meat and a lot of <laughs> potatoes in the big 10 right now right that that's a perfect now you, like you said you also get nashville too and i think when you go from just a city's aspect yes the the sec is more of a college town conference versus a major right. city conference right. so you know that was one of the arguments with uh, on twitter was where someone said i don't really care for the college town you know the towns that you go to in the sec and really right. if you're being honest the acc has one of the best city selections you know with charlotte sure. boston miami whatever i feel like though if you're going to a college football game i want that college town experience i want that tailgating experience i want to go ex you know tailgate at the grove at old miss i want to go to bat right. and, do, and do all those things you know if i'm worried about going to a fun city i'll be an nfl fan because they're every right. major city and so i think like going to you know no offense to the great people of the state of Illinois <laughs> campaign, <laughs> Illinois, isn't on my list of places to go, you know, no, it's not, um, you know, Purdue and all that stuff. It's just not. And so I think right. you have that aspect too. And I think that the other thing that, that we talked about before the show that would be interesting with this is if you got any potential travel partners, like if, oh, if man. the sec, you know, you have, they're already built in, but if the right. big 10 swoops in and says, okay, we're going to take Clemson, Miami, Florida state, Notre Dame, or something like that. Well, now you have two teams that are within driving distance that are immediate. Correct. So I think that can weigh into the decision as far as what you would want from a fan perspective. Yeah, for sure. So I think the travel partners would would be huge. But, you know, let's just say they're like, OK, we're going to stop at 20. We want Florida State and Notre Dame that gives us our team in, in Florida. And that's it. You're I mean, again, you're on an island by yourself. Right. And you said this, you said this in the pre-show is that like if, if you end up going to the Big Ten by yourself, then, yes, you you're on an island by yourself, but the benefit we're not sure outweighs the, the, the benefit to the big 10. Like, okay. So yes, right. you benefit as a school with all the prestige, the contract money, all that stuff. But really the big 10 gains the bigger benefit because they Fox gets to plant a flag finally in the state of Florida, in the South. Of course, all those schools who, 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 you know, Ohio State, Michigan, all them that kind of recruit Florida, but don't really recruit Florida. They, right. they try to, but they're not as good. Well, now they'll have much more of an advantage of coming in and recruit Florida because they have games here. People get to see the product here, all those things. Whereas if you go to the SEC, all those schools already recruit Florida. You're already recruiting against those. There's nothing new. There's nothing, you know, there's no needing to like lock out the border or anything like that. Right. And so that's where I think, you know, if, if you can get a Miami – or Clemson to go with you. Now you're not having to track all your travel games are so far away that it becomes a disadvantage when you're on the road instead of it, it can be an advantage because now you have the ability for your fans to be able to travel around there. So again, I mean, those couple of things there again, at, at, when you look at travel and you're weighing this decision just as a fan, yeah. I mean, you, you should definitely want the SEC over the Big Ten as a fan. We're not talking about the administration. We're not talking about the holistic picture. Just as a fan looking at it from an athletic standpoint of, of enjoying the ability to, to enjoy the away games, to be a part of those things, yep. the SEC is far and away the best option. Right. And even just looking at the game day atmosphere. So I went through yeah. and I looked at attendance and, and all that stuff in 2023. And so here's some more numbers that I'm going to throw at you real quick is – so just for reference, we know Florida State's downsizing. They're going to end up around 70,000 in 2025. But last oh. year, they averaged 78.7 thousand with a stadium uh, full at 98.9% .9 of the time uh, of the capacity mm. on average. So the Big Ten, looking at 2023, what I did was we looked at the real big ones, the 100,000 plus yeah. uh, on average crowds. Then we looked at the average, the little kind of the little ones, the sub 50,000 stadiums. Or, or crowd average. Then we looked at the average crowds across the conference and how full the stadiums were week to week. So the Big Ten has three stadiums or three average crowd sizes over 100,000. The SEC has four. So they're pretty on par there. Wow, yeah. It's where you get to that middle tier that makes a huge difference. So the Big Ten, on average last year, had seven teams average sub-50,000 fans at their uh, attendance at their home games. The SEC had one, and that was Vanderbilt. 
Like wow. they are literally the anchor of the conference. Wow. Wow. Um, but then you look at the average <laughs> crowd size in the Big Ten was 64,200, and the SEC was 72,000. So about 8,000 more people. Wow. And then you look at the percentage of how full the stadiums were. So the Big Ten was 89.7% full because they just have a lot of smaller stadiums. Right. The SEC was full at 97.3%. And the amount of stadiums that were 90% or full or more, like they're basically full the entire season, the uh, the Big Ten had 13 and the SEC had 14. Right. And one of them was at 89 and a half. So basically, you know, you have more teams in the Big Ten, but the SEC in a sense has a larger on average cr crowd for a game day atmosphere. Their stadiums are full more often because it's just, you know, the football is just such a big thing in the South. Like such you talked about. Deal. And so I think when you like to kind of wrap up the travel and the game day atmosphere, obviously, again, you're talking about LSU at, at nighttime Oof, in death Valley. Man. I mean, I know, I know you could probably compare that with, you know, Penn state happy Valley. And White stuff out? Like that. Yeah. Like that's yeah. cool. But I just think at a top to bottom, you're getting a better game day oh, yeah. experience if you're looking for large crowds and full stadiums and all that stuff and the travel, I think it's obviously the answer is clear that you're going with the SEC there. So, and you know, the, the last thing that we can kind of tie into that is like the tailgating and the game day atmosphere. You know, I'm sure they have some great tailgates around the big team. Yeah, I, sure. I, I don't take anything away from them. The SEC is known for the Grove oh. at Ole Miss, you know, Baton Rouge. I go to Georgia, Florida pretty much every year because I'm related to a lot of Georgia fans. Um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, they kind of kick our butt in tailgating. Like that's a yeah. really freaking fun time down in Jacksonville. So like, yeah, man, I, I think just from that aspect, I think you have to lean sec. And I also think the one thing that we talked about before that a lot of people overlook is unless things change, your primetime games in the big 10 are the big noon kickoff. So oh, now all gosh. your big games are at noon, which I mean, shout out to Madison social. They literally have a thing, a hat or whatever that says noon games suck. Oh, in the Can South, we talk about that for a second, right? Like, like this is this is a big deal. People don't realize the fact right. that if we're in the Big Ten, our prime time game. So Michigan versus Florida State, Florida State versus Ohio State, Florida State versus Penn State is going to be at now unless we get a a, a, a whiteout at at Penn State. Right, it's going to be at noon. Right. Somebody tell me who's who's even awake at noon. <laughs> <laughs> not Florida college kids. I promise you that no. they have a hard time getting there at three 30 and it doesn't mean that you're going to play at noon. It just means right. If the, if you're the biggest game of the week, you're at noon. And so like, you know, that definitely to me with, with sec where it was traditionally three 30, but like you were telling me now that they did away with CBS, it's probably going to be right. to their traditional seven 30, eight o'clock time slot. So to right. me, that's, that's a little more advantageous to me. I, I know people love like to be able to get there and go soon and early and all it's great for travel, but like, Man, it's just the noon game and the night games are. It's not even remotely it's close night and to day. It's it, night and day to use it, that old adage. It's night and day. It, it really is, and so that's really kind of where we come at from a just a fan experience perspective, as far as your attendance, your your travel, and all that stuff. But now let's kind of look at some more of the the meat and potatoes of, of what okay. it means for the school. Yeah. So I think too, and let me throw up some of the the comments, the tweets that we got from here. That it's funny because some of these show, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to read it. If you're if you're on the just listening on audio only on podcast, we'll kind of uh, parse these down for you. But it's funny how you can have two different opinions in the same yep. thing. So um, a a good friend of the show here, Ed Lambert, left us a comment who said. Recruiting. The Big Ten gives us opportunities that right now we do not have. FSU already has strong presence in the SEC country. Lots of big alignment in Big Ten country. And I agree with them. Look, I'm too. trying to get some of that Midwest beef on this offensive That's line. Right. Like, you know, right. bring, bring in some of that Midwest beef. <laughs> but, you know, you also have the, the other commenter here says that I'm saying SEC because it feeds into our recruiting pipeline. TV yep. money helps with uh, recruiting and all that stuff. I get that too. And I think the one aspect to think of is, as much as we hate the mantra that the SEC is the best or whatever, right. that's been ingrained in recruits' minds too. They want to play exactly. in the SEC because I think that like Florida State, from a recruiting perspective, you have the you are in the best position, like geographic other than Miami. Like yep. you are in the best geographic position. You are in the most talent-rich state in the country. You're border Georgia, you're close to Texas, you have a really good advantage. 
but you've always been kneecapped a little bit by the right. ACC, and that's only right. going to get worse after last year. So that's one reason you just need to make it out of the ACC. But I think if you're in the SEC, then it's like, okay, now you're in that fertile recruiting ground. You're right. in the conference every kid wants to right. play in. It, it doesn't stop people from leaving. Jeremiah Smith, right. you know, he went to, right. to Ohio State. He left the state. But I think it's just, man, with that SEC money, with the the conference patch on, on your, you know, Mike Norvell's polo when he's walking in, yep. like that, that to me – is better for recruiting than opening up that Big Ten. And, and something that – I'll kick it back to you on this, but something that I said in the pre-show when we were talking about it was I think that, like, from a university standpoint, a, a university and a, and a conference, looking at both properties separate, I think yeah. I think that Florida State joining the Big Ten is more beneficial for, like, Florida State than it would be for the Big Ten. The Big Ten right. is going to be fine. Florida State needs to right. go to the Big Ten because they need to get out of the ACC. But – you know, some people talk about like the Big Ten wants Florida State as far as the programs, not from a TV aspect, because they want to open the gate to recruit heavily in Florida. Florida. Yep. So I think it actually benefits the Big Ten more to have Florida State as far as recruiting than it does Florida State to be able to recruit Big Ten areas, because now right. you're going to invite all those guys into Florida. Right. You know, They're already here for the most part, but you're going to give them a home game to right. go to. That's and right. still, like, unless these players get a big NIL deal, some of these families can't afford to travel no. to these away games. Exactly. And then keep in mind all that travel we said. So, like, now if you're sending your kid to Florida State to play in the Big Ten, Congratulations. You got to drive a thousand miles to go That's watch right. a kid play unless you unless you're coming to a home game. So, you know, I know there's the national aspect of it. And now that can open up things in California, open up right. things in Texas. I also understand that the, the Florida State fan base from a fan perspective is a national brand. Right. You have fans across the country. You will have fans at Oregon, at Washington, at, at these places where they just happen to live. You're a Florida State fan yourself who lived in California. Right. Right. You know, and, and you can grow that fan base. But I think like as far as recruiting goes. To me, I think the advantage would be more playing in the SEC than it would really kind of getting to recruit that Big Ten area. Yo, I absolutely agree. And, and the thing about recruiting is if you look at the the big four, let's just call it the big four. Uh, well, you're adding UC, uh, USC in there. So you look at Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, USC. They're probably the four best recruiting programs in the Big Ten right now that are getting the actual recruits. You look at them. And really, Ohio State has been dominating the recruiting landscape in the Big Ten. They've been able to pull some of the top players, some of the best players, especially out of the state of Florida. Obviously, we saw how we lost Jeremiah Smith to them um, and whatnot. But if you if you actually did the math, if you added it up, if you looked over the past 10 to 15 years, you would see that the SEC as a whole recruits much better skill athletes. Skill. So we're talking about wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, uh, quarterbacks, uh, defensive backs, linebackers. Uh, um, we're talking about those types of skilled yeah. players that actually has to not not the beef in the line. I'll give the Big Ten that. Yeah, you're getting some some hog mogs in um, in in the offensive line. But when you look at what has been dominating it has been the sec and florida state when they walk into a home you know they can sell the brand they can sell the iconic nature of florida state the the history all like that they can sell it all the tradition everything and it gets us in the door of many of these top line recruits but the thing that is if we're being honest that has hurt florida state in recruiting besides you know terrible coaching has right. been the fact that it gets used against us all the time that we are in, we are in SEC country, but we play in this baby conference of the ACC. If we go to the Big Ten, it will get used to it get used against us that we are in SEC country, but we're playing in the Big Ten because we're scared to be in the SEC because yep. the SEC is the best conference in the world. That's where real football is played. Yep. You know, uh, the Big Ten is where mud and dirt gets played like that. You know, all those things that get said about us. And it's not again, this is not an offense to the Big Ten. It's not offense to those they're recruiting there because Ohio State again. Ohio State, yeah. more than any other school, comes into the SEC countries or SEC, you know, area and recruits really well. But if you look at as a totality of it, the SEC out recruits all those schools in the Big Ten in that area and they keep their people. They keep their kids. Yeah. It's very hard to come in and get these kids. I mean, Jeremiah Smith was a difficult recruitment for Ohio State. I mean, we Florida State was probably about this yeah. close to securing that. 
I mean, you look at uh, what was his name? Bolden from last year, who was a Florida State commit. You know what ended up changing? He wanted to be in an SEC school. That's why he flipped yeah. last second, right? And then he even said after Florida State, I don't remember the game. I think they played a game in the Orange Bowl or something like that. Anyways, after that recall. game. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall that. Don't recall. Hmm. Anyways, after said game, he basically said something like, see, this is why I'm glad I went to the SEC school. Right, so, right. Again, like you're going to have – the thing that has been missing for Florida State is the ability to say we are an SEC school, we play in SEC country, we this is what we are. Boom. Look at what Florida State has done. Just as an ACC before the before the playoff came in the 90s, Florida State was dominating not just college football, but also recruiting in the South. I mean, right. everybody wanted to come play for Florida State. They could do it again. I think having that SEC tag on their jersey would would just solidify everything else. I do too. And it gets you into, you know, again, you're going to be playing games in the the best states that you want to right. get those recruits from. You know, because a lot of those those teams, a lot of their best recruits were come from still come from Florida and Georgia. It's just, right. you know, now you're kind of gonna almost give them a little bit of an advantage. And again, I mean when we talk about the SEC, I think you bring up a great point because this is something I kind of want to transition to when you talk about the the best, you know what I mean? The, the SEC best. is the best. Football lives in the South and all that stuff. And right. I wholeheartedly agree with you. That's no mm -hmm. offense to the Big Ten, but no I have some, I have some numbers that kind of drive this home because I think, you know, when people talk about, and I'll throw a, a couple of more tweets up here where uh, Deep South College Football had talked about, obviously, the impact on Tallahassee, the economy and all that stuff of the SEC. But he also said all sports, especially football, would have a huge economic impact yep. financially. Every team in the SEC would flood to Tallahassee and all that. So that's a good point. But when you talk about the other sports, I think that is where the conversation yep. does get interesting, too. Now, obviously, going to the Big Ten or the SEC financially is going to help you in right. all sports, regardless. Right. right. But just looking at, like, prestige from a sports perspective. Now, right. we haven't got to the Big Ten perspective yet. We're going right. to do that in a second. This is kind of like our SEC argument here. Right. When you look at on-field success, these are national titles won in each sport since the AP era began in 1998. So, Michael, this is this ain't even this ain't even <laughs> <laughs> this is almost embarrassing when you look I at it. I can't even wait for you to tell me. So like the so in football, your national championships since 1998, the SEC has now again keep in mind this is current SEC members. It doesn't mean it was one in the SEC. Same with the Big Ten. All the USC has a couple in there that, that count to the Big Ten. So the SEC has won 17 national titles since 1998. The Big Ten has won five. That is oh, not gosh. even close. When you look at basketball, yeah. you're a little closer there. The SEC has four national titles. Basketball has two. I think where you're going to suffer the most as far as level of competition is probably baseball. Now, baseball. I know that's yep. it does take a distant backseat because it's not a big revenue sport. But the SEC since 98, and I kind of used, I know they don't use the AP in those sports, but I use the same cutoff. The SEC has 12 baseball national championships. Woo. The Big Ten has two, just oh two. Oh, my gosh. It's Jeez. not even close. So not I really, close. right. So I really do think like when you go off prestige alone, I think that it's act, as far as from a sports perspective, a game day perspective, a travel perspective, all that stuff, right. it's all SEC. Like the, the conversation right. isn't even close. I think when right. you when you go to look at the, the Big Ten, that's where you have to look at the academics. Right. The TV contracts, the TV partners, those right. things like that, which we're going to get into in a second. But, you know, when you just look at on the field results, man, it's it's not even close. And, and, and real we'll, athletes are playing in the SEC, apparently. Right. And so, like, you know, we'll and we'll get into being able to compete a little bit, too. But, man, I mean, it's just it's, you know, baseball is, is probably where you would suffer the most. Right. We talked about it before that like basketball, you're you're probably going to be pretty close there. They're all, you know, in the, either the conference. 10, yeah. Right. Big 10, SEC, ACC are pretty close in basketball, yeah. you know, and football. It's not to say that those teams aren't good because they no. normally have a team to make the playoffs. But again, it's putting trophies in the trophy case. It's just right. I mean, the, the the freaking ACC has five national right. titles. Right. You know, when you right. look at from 98. So it's like or maybe six if you count the one the last one, uh, maybe the one Georgia Miami, Tech. Yeah. Like or Miami won a late one from from 1998. So like that's true. I mean, the ACC <laughs> has just about as many as the Big Ten. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, you 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 look at that and you you see clearly that. 
athletically, the SEC has produced better teams uh, in those sports. Uh, baseball, uh, football, obviously. You know, like like we said, uh, you know, in basketball, though, over the last several years, the SEC has gotten better in basketball. It's it's typically been a top heavy conference with Kentucky, you know, now Alabama, uh, Tennessee, uh, those programs are getting better. But it's typically been Kentucky, Florida, won two national titles back to back in basketball. The Big Ten has really been Michigan State. That's really where the Big Ten has been. Uh, you know, Ohio State made it to a final four way back when. And yeah. lost to Florida. So basketball has been pre- predominantly really uh, Michigan State. So those so you look at that and you, you see those numbers and you just say, man, well, we're going to get better competition, at least in the you know round ball sports in the Olympic sports in right. the SEC as well, too. Yes, yes, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Uh, as, as I don't think the Olympic sports should be a reason why you choose the SEC over the Big Ten, but these right. are just good facts to know. These are good things if you're President right. McCullough, if you're uh, A.D. Alford, if you're if you're those guys looking at, okay, where is the best fit? You want to have a more balanced athletic um, competition? It's going to be in the SEC. And, and of course, SEC. we know football and, and revenue is what is driving this whole thing. Right. So, like, that's obviously – that's not even a question – and I, I do think that brings up an interesting conversation where I've heard a lot of people say, look, let's be frank. The easiest path to the playoffs is going to be in the Big Ten because it's not as tough of a conference. But I've heard I that. think you also have to to look at I think Florida State could compete in both. That is something I'm yep. confident in. I just think that, yes, I will agree. The Big Ten probably has an easier path because you have, you know, Washington. We don't know what, what their next path right, is going to be. Look with, like. yep. Right. With losing DeBoer. I think Oregon is is here to stay. I think right, USC I is never going to be able to play defense. So, <laughs> what, you know, <laughs> as long as Mike Norvell's calling the offense, I feel pretty good about that. But, you know, you look at there's three or four teams to compete against, and, and I think it's not too much different in the SEC. I mean, of course, right. you could lose to anybody, but, you know, I mean, Kentucky football, Vanderbilt, you know, South right. Carolina, that's not – you know, I, that's not juggernauts. That's not right, like, right. you know, that, that's not super They're tough. not traditional powerhouses. Right, right exactly. So I, I do understand the argument about it's a little bit easier. But again, you lose that you don't play anybody argument. You right. can also, in the new 12-team playoff format with the uneven picks, you don't have to go undefeated in the SEC or the Big Ten. You could be a, a right. possibly a two-loss team and still make the playoffs. So that's right. I, right. I think like with that strength of schedule bump, you you can afford to take a lump or two throughout the season and still be in the position, even if you are against tougher competition. And, you know, when you look at Florida State versus the SEC over the past 10 years, Florida State is 11 and five versus the SEC. Oh, come on now. Come in on. that 10 years, that included a four year rebuild, which was the first, you know, th- the worst point in Florida State in the last 40 years. Wow. And, wow. and, and even then, like when you look at the losses, Four of the five losses that Florida State has had in the last 10 years against the SEC was against all top 15 ranked SEC teams. So it's been against really good teams. And I believe they're 11 right. and two in years where they were at least 10 wins or more. Oof, so five of the gosh. 11 wins were against ranked SEC teams. And that includes the SEC champion, the SEC yep. West champion twice, and the yep. SEC East champion twice. So Let's miss go. me with all that. We can't compete miss in the us. SEC. Because you're also doing that as an ACC school. Like once That's we right. have SEC money to go spend oh. millions on recruiting and, and polo armies off the field and all that stuff like like they have in the SEC, you know, again, like you're, you've are you been competing with the SEC kind of with one arm behind your back. That's tied right. Behind your That's back. right. That's and a then, great point. Right. And then so like, again, with the Big Ten, we don't play them a whole lot, but you have a winning record against Michigan, Ohio State, USC. You're tied against... Uh, I think Penn State and maybe uh, I think Washington or something like that. I don't know. We, I, no, I don't think we ever played Washington. Or no, we have back no. in the day, I think. Back in but, the day. Um, we beat Wisconsin. I, I remember that. Yeah. So, like, I think that's really the thing is I'm not worried about Florida State being able to compete in either one. Are you right. going to go undefeated year in and year out? No, probably not. No, but you be don't, harder. You don't have to. Correct. If you stay in the ACC, you're going to you have, have to. to. Yes. You pretty much have to. And so, like, I think as far as just from the competition on the field, I think, again, the SEC has the prowess there. But, you know, that's not the entire conversation. But, again, it's just – I think really the way we're approaching this is a lot of people just look at the SEC like screw SP- ESPN, like we said right. in the beginning. Right. But we're just trying to, like, look at the whole picture. You know, the, there's more to it than just I hate ESPN. Right. 
because there's a lot of good things about the SEC. There's a lot of bad things about the SEC. Right. And, you know, one of these that I want to put up right now is I think the the Big Ten welcomes and respects FSU. I think the SEC reluctantly takes FSU and treats FSU like they did a, a favor. Also thinking of the other opportunities in the big, which we're about to talk about. And Ron Herman left us that comment, which we appreciate. So I think that is true, too, man. Those SEC fan bases can be pretty, let's just call it abrasive. Um, that, yes. that's, that's the PG way of saying <laughs> it. But there's probably some ruthless fan bases in the Big Ten, too. But I do think if yeah, you join the, sure. the SEC, you're still going to be that kind of like the redheaded stepchild. You know, they, they let us in, oh, yeah. and it's like only because we have to or whatever, and it's still going to be yeah. a little old Florida State or whatever. I think the Big Ten yep. looks at you in a little different light. So I think that is a big point. But – if you go in and you whip them, you know, if you beat them in their stadium, then what are they going to, I mean, they, right. what are they going to say? Now, listen, Jesse, I've never been to jail, but I've seen a lot of movies where people walk into jail <laughs> and, <laughs> and you walk into the prison and everybody notices you and they, yep. they start to size you up and then they're like, okay, I'm going to make you my little boy or whatever. I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to beat you up. That's right. the SEC. I look at the Big Ten like a country club that you don't belong in. You walk in, everybody's right. like, who's this gentleman here? Or are we right. just letting in the riffraff? And you know, exactly. they'll be kind to your face, but they'll be like talking about you behind your right. back. But just like in prison, you got to stand your ground, right? Right. You got right. to go out in the golf club, go golf course there, you know, hit a hole in one a couple times. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, sir. Didn't, didn't, I didn't recognize your game like that. You know exactly. what I'm saying? In the SEC, you just got to go in and like shank Georgia in the first yeah, like the right. first year before you're going to get any respect. So it's like you know that's it's right. you got to play by prison rules. You know what that's I mean? You gotta, right. you gotta that's go right. You got to go shank shank somebody or whatever. But no, I, I think that's a great point. And I, I think you know again that plays into the game day atmosphere too. But again, right. man, like like I said, as a social media you know an, an outlet that that we had the engagement with LSU. I mean, good Lord, Michael, I wanted to block so many of them daggone people because there's just so much <laughs> ignorant in the ignorance in the SEC. But again, like they you can tell their passion and, that's and maybe right. that's the same way in the Big Ten. We just maybe. haven't experienced it yet. Maybe. Right. But I can guarantee you that 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 exists in the SEC. So now let's get to the reasons why you would say that Florida State, we may want to go to, to the go SEC to the from all the aspects oh, that we okay. just well well we just named pretty much all the reasons why you would go to the SEC why we like in our hearts we would feel like the SEC yeah. may be the more natural fit that the prowess on the field and all that the regionality yeah. all that stuff that's a great argument but let's go with why FSU should join the Big Ten instead why is the Big okay. Ten better for FSU than the SEC because I still think we're going to end up in the Big Ten I still think that's the too. landing spot and I think the, another comment that we had here from uh, Big Ten Bound Knowles, which kind of shows a little bit of your bias there, but easily the the B1G, better TV contract, at least I would say TV partner, more money, right. increased academic prestige, national conference, less dealing with an evil network who FSU fans will forever hate the choices easy. Yeah, Those are all great <laughs> points. I 100% agree with that. We should always... You know, I, I think the SEC, SEC chants are the stupidest thing in college sports. The dumbest. I yes. hope I never hear that. And I, I swear, like, if you ever see me doing that, you know, hit me in the head with a frying pan or something. Because <laughs> I, I, I've been kidnapped like that. You know, I that would... thing, like, send something out if you've been kidnapped. Yes. Like, if you yes. ever hear me do that, I've been I'm not in a safe place. Um, so I think that's part of it, too. But, yeah, I think you you like Fox as a TV partner better than ESPN. We've talked about this before. Obviously, it's no secret that Disney's having financial struggles. The ESPN, right. yeah, they're putting a lot of their, their chips into the playoffs and into the SEC. But I think That's that right. as a – when you look at the revenue growth and the things that they're doing, I have to agree that I think Fox is your better TV partner. And, and you know, when you look at just from a revenue perspective, right. with some of the new contracts that have come out, I mean – the. The first thing is the glowing the, or the glaring aspect that you got to get out of the ACC. I you mean, you have to. It is absolutely without a doubt, no questions asked. So, and, and we'll talk about some of the money first, just to refresh, just to put it in people's minds as we go forward to talk about this. First off, where you have to start is the new playoff payout. Yep. Big 10 and SEC are getting 21 million a year. The ACC is getting 13. So you are $8 million behind already every single behind. year before you even get started. <laughs> right. So, in 2022, the Big Ten had a conference-wide revenue of $846 million with an average of about $58 million payout per school. 
Now, God. some of these projections that I found, these are older projections that were before right. some of the expansion, before the unequal playoff revenue and things like that. But in 2025, the Big Ten is projected to be paying $75.2 million per conference member. In 2029, that jumps to $94.5 million. That's just some of the projections. Again, this is a conservative, older one that hasn't been updated yet. Yeah. But the interesting thing about a more updated number when you look at the Big Ten TV contract is they're reporting that it's looking like there's going to be about a floor of $80 million per school. Goodness My gracious, goodness. that's a lot of money. So looking at the SEC, they actually had a down year in 2022 at $802 million in revenue, $49.9 million payout per school. In 2023, they did, they've already filed their taxes and all that, so these numbers are available for them. Yeah. They did jump up to $853 million, $51.3 million per school. Their projection for 2025, slightly less than the Big Ten at 74.9 compared to 75.2. They are predicted to jump the Big Ten per this one that I saw. Another one, they're, they're more on even footing. But both of them are going to be over $100 million by 2029. Right. Yes. The ACC, for reference, in 2022 generated <laughs> $617 million with a payout of 39.4 per school. And your projections in 2029 is only $55.5 million. That's so. It. The thing is, the revenue gap alone off the conservative projections with the playoffs, Florida State would be behind by 2029 in, in the Big Ten. You would be behind, you know, from the ACC versus Big Ten perspective, you'd be behind $273 million, a quarter of a billion dollars over that point. Gosh. The SEC would be almost $300 million. Now, some of the more not conservative and more updated projections Florida State could be versus the ACC versus the Big Ten with the CFP could be almost a half a billion dollars behind these schools in the first 10 years. Oh, God. First off, you got to get the heck up out of the ACC. No, you got to go. You got to go. Like, you got to burn, I mean, like yeah, burn it down. Like, do like, I don't know. I, I don't know if you ever watched uh, like Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, yes. but where like he's in the drive thru and he's like, Let's burn this mother down or whatever. <laughs> so it's like you got to do whatever you got to do to get do, out man. of here. And, this and is Dave need... Chappelle putting his feet on your couch, saying, "Right, get burn this couch." Like, no, you got to go. You got to get out of here. But the money is where you know that you have to end up in the big two. But the money really, I think, down the road will be really comp comparative between the SEC yeah. and the Big Ten. Both are projected, yeah. you know, by twenty twenty nine to be in the hundred million dollar range, but. You know, when you talk about just from a from an academic standpoint, if, right. if Florida State, which they are pursuing the AAU accreditation, and right. I'm not here to to like be some expert on AAU. I can't tell you much about that. Right. I know I can tell you that the Big Ten prefers you to be AAU. They do. They have said that it is not required. Nebraska lost their AAU certification right. and they did not get kicked out. So it's not required. But that opens up a lot of money for federal grants for research and, and stuff like That's that. Right. So I think like from a university perspective, from the academics, the money, the nationwide conference, the ability to expand your brand, I think it's easily the Big Ten, the better TV oh, partner. Yeah. You're, uh, that's why I said early on, I think my heart tells me the SEC because of the game day, the fun part, the fan aspect. But from a university and a program perspective, I think it, it's without a doubt the Big Ten. It feels like a safer, more solid ground with Fox. It feels like more building up your, your academic university it just feels right. like the SEC is a pure sports play. Correct. Well, and if you think about this, I think one of the biggest aspects of that 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 Twitter comment was the idea of a national conference. I mean, the right. SEC right now, even with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas, it's still regional. It's still contained to the southwest part of the United States. Whereas southeast, right now, yeah. southeast, sorry, sorry, my bad, southeast <laughs> part of the United States. But right now, the, the Big Ten is national they have west coast teams they have somewhat kind of east coast teams and then they obviously have the north teams and so you're looking at a a national conference like the nfl florida state is already an iconic brand that is all the way out there the big 10 could get that brand even further now you're yep. uh, now i was a seminal fan living in in california there are seminal fans out there for sure but imagine with the big 10 how you could get more of that brand awareness from a university standpoint, the reason why this is important is because you want kids from all over the country applying to your university. Where yep. if you're in the SEC, again, you're only going to get that Southeast kind of influence. 
Now, if you win national titles, then that gets you a national brand and then other right. people will want to come. But, man, if you're in the Big Ten and you're traveling all over the country playing games, playing football games, playing sports, other kids get to see you. Yeah, that that for the if I'm the president, I'm thinking about that. Like, oh, we're going to get applications from all over the country. Yep. We're going to give more national awareness. So that's where I think uh, as a as a university where the Big Ten is kind of appealing because you're going to get that real national exposure versus only really a regional exposure for most of it. Right. And that that out of state tuition hits different, you know, for, for Florida State. So, yes, it um, does. right. But, you know, at the same time, I, I, that's a good point. And, and I will say that even though like I think the SEC is making an effort to stay regional because they right. they really they want that. like a lot of what we talked about in the first half of the show was the all the aspects that regional rival that travel aspect. They they like that. That's yep. and that's really what helped build the SEC to what it is, because it's yep. you know, you you captivated an audience that are that are really close to each other. But I think that when you look at the Big Ten, the one thing that I do like about them, when you look at their expansion strategy, while it is national, they kind of do still respect rivalries. That's why they, they do. took yep. USD and UCLA. Right. They That's took right. Oregon and Washington, which makes you think if they were to take Florida State, they would probably go after a school like Miami or North Carolina or uh, you know, or even Clemson, which I think Clemson is probably yeah. more of a natural fit to the SEC from an yep. academic standpoint. Right. But you know, if you were to get either one of those, then at least you have kind of that that more traditional team that you played in the past. Right. Especially right. if you could like if you could get Miami, then you guarantee you also have that rivalry because again, oh, yeah. here's the here's the thing that that I think is kind of overlooked. With these conferences moving to 18 and 20 and, and power conference super conferences or whatnot, you're going to increase your amount of conference games. Th oh, yeah. They're going to go yeah. to 9, possibly 10 in the future when you get to so many teams. We've seen one of the one of the saddest things in the expansion of college football is the death yeah. of, of rivalries. Yes, yes. And amen. if right, and so like if you don't go to the SEC, you risk losing Florida. That's if right. you don't take Miami to the Big Ten or the SEC with you, you risk losing that. And like I, I mean, I get it, man. Like I want to play for a national championship, but like yeah. I look forward to those two yes. things. As much as as much as we we want to be in a national uh, championship as much as you want to be in one of these conference man the two let's let's just be real you could almost lose every other game in the year <laughs> right. there are two games you're not allowed to lose if you're a florida state coach miami right. and florida right we look forward to those games we hate those schools with a right. passion we could literally start like a florida only conference and we'd be probably <laughs> be perfectly happy like just put the, right. the big three add in a couple other teams and whatnot so yeah, man. I, I mean, again, like I, I think that that's something to consider, too, is just losing the potential of losing those rivalries. And, right. and I hope that doesn't happen no matter how this shakes out, no matter who get, gets to go where for State, Miami, whoever. I hope you don't lose those because that's really like the sad part where you you lost Bedlam. You lost, you know, Oregon, Oregon State. You lost all these these traditional rivalries and like Florida State and Miami and Florida State and Florida. I know we're biased. Two of the best in the sport. And oh, so, like, I would, I would really hate to lose those. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure Florida and Florida State would find a way to play. But, you know, yeah. again, man, I mean, it, there's only so much you can do when you have to fulfill your right. conference slate first. So, yeah, I think, like, as we kind of start to wind things down here, I just think when you look at it from a whole, you know, like we talked about, I think the Big Ten is probably the better move in the long run from a holistic picture, from right. Right. the university's point of view, from, you know, there's still – and. We talked about it, but I don't want to downplay. Like you said, this is no disrespect to the Big Ten because Correct. those those game day atmospheres are, are great there too. Some of them. Yeah, those of fans them. are rabid too. Some of them. Some of them. So like there's a lot of good stuff about the Big Ten. There's a lot of reasons I would love to be in the Big Ten. I would love to never have to deal with ESPN until we made the playoffs. <laughs> so, you know, I think that that's the reality of the situation. And I think the Big Ten is going to end up being the move because of academic reasons. They brought in President McCullough for a reason. They they've right. been upping, you know, this university has been climbing in academics. They've been spending that's more right. money on research. They you know, they're chasing that AAU accreditation. There are things it feels like they're preparing more to go to the big 10 it's yeah. just we feel that from a from a straight up fan football sports yes. perspective the sec is a better fit and again i i think when you sum it all up the last the last tweet i want to put up here is from skip foster who really i Come mean on, this, is, this is all that matters 
Yep. The question is both harmless and annoying, which is true because, I mean, our yep. opinion doesn't matter. I think it's just a fun conversation to have. But it's harmless because it's fun knowing what fans prefer. And that's really all this was about. It's like what fans prefer. But this is where, where it comes into play. It's annoying because in a game of musical chairs, it's not important which chair you get. It's Ooh, important on, that Skip. you get a chair. And, Preach, Skip. And like the real, the best answer is I don't care which one. And I, I'm the same way. I don't care which one you get into as long as you get out of the ACC. And yep. that's why I even said, like, I, I use the musical chairs reference myself where I say in the ACC, I think this is why some of the teams, they're, they're fine with staying in the ACC because yep. it's a game of musical chairs. They don't have a chair. There are not that's enough right. chairs for everybody. So that's I right. think Florida State... I think they they have a landing spot in mind already. Either one of the power two. I think that's the only options. They're not going to go to the Big Twelve. That's a sidestep. That right. yeah. Who knows that once that you know once they renegotiate contracts without Texas and Oklahoma, who knows where it's going to go? Correct. So I, I think it is down to two options. Unless and someone there were a couple comments in there. I don't know what these people are thinking about staying <laughs> in the ACC. Nah, no. And I and I said I think the ACC is is it's only an option if it's not an option. If that Correct. makes sense. Like if you if you can't legally get out of the ACC and it may not be 2036, it may be 2027 if this extension right. doesn't get picked up. Right. Right. So, you know, again, you there's so many moving parts of this. You have to consider full shares versus partial share members. How much of that money are you going to even be getting? Who makes you right. a better offer? What looks better, you know, holistically for the university? And so I, I still come back to, I think, again. My head says the Big Ten because it's a, a more feels like a more stable, uh, growing conference. It feels where it feels like the SEC is is huge in football, right? But it's being managed by a brand that is on the decline a little bit with ESPN and yep. good for them. But for them. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> so yeah, man, I just think that's really where I stand on it, and I think it's interesting that you know we did the poll; it was overwhelmingly Big Ten. I would be right. willing to bet that when you look at that. 68% that voted Big mm. Ten. I'm probably sure 99% of that 68% had a lot to do with ESPN. I oh, think yeah. that had, oh, that had yeah. a lot to do with it. So, man, people want the Big Ten. I want the Big Ten. I like the Big Ten. I just think that it's the SEC is not as bad as some people no. make it out to be when you get over the fact that you have to deal with ESPN anyway. Right. Listen, I know, I know, I know we don't like the SEC because it's attached to ESPN. But Greg Sankey and them advertising and promoting and trying to, to, you know, politic for his schools to get into the playoff, that's his job. That's what you want out of a conference commissioner. Because if you don't, then you get the other one, Jim Phillips, who said nothing, right. Who, right. who said, you know what? Yes, everybody might think the ACC sucks, but look at our non non-football sports. They're doing really good right now. Like, what are you doing, dude? Right. No, right. that's not who we want. And so – I want to make this point really clear. There is no way, no way on God's good green earth that Florida State should remain in the in the ACC unless legally we are bound by it. That is right. it. There is no reason for it. That yeah. conference is not going to be the same. The only other thing I could think of is if the ACC acquiesce and basically is going to pay us the same amount that the SEC schools are going to make. They're not going right. to do that. Those little they schools are not going to allow no. that. So no. we should not remain in the ACC. Now, it's like this, Jesse. If your house is on fire, what's your number one goal? If you're inside your house and your house is on fire. Get out. It's get out of the house. Get out of the house and then go secure what? A new house or to rebuild right. your house, Right. The ACC is on fire. FSU's got to get out of that house and go yeah. get a better house, which is the SEC or the Big Ten. Either conference, like like Skip said, he was preaching, man. He was spitting fire. He was cooking, as the yeah. young kids say. <laughs> as the kids say. As the kids say. Like, he's right. It doesn't matter. At the end of the right. day, get into one of them, SEC or the Big Ten. It doesn't matter which one. Both of them are going to be uh, suited for us because we're going to be financially able to compete. If we're in the Big Ten, we'll be able to compete with the SEC because we got yep. Big Ten money, right? If we're in yep. the SEC, we'll be able to compete with the Big Ten because we got SEC money. It doesn't matter. What does matter is getting out of this conference because if we stay in this conference any longer than when we have to, we're looking at a decline. We might. I told you in the pre-show, we might as well go be uh, FCS football if we stay in the ACC. Right. Because again, we talked about that revenue gap. If you, 
let's just you know split the difference. One was close to half a billion. One was a quarter billion. If you're three hundred and fifty million dollars behind these other schools it, by twenty twenty nine or twenty thirty in the first ten years of yeah. you not joining those you know not joining those other conferences. I mean, that creates so many issues like you have to oh, consider man. because one, they could poach your coaches. I mean, you know, every SEC and we've done a That's great right. job like Michael Alford in this administration has done a great job, fending, job fending people off. Like you don't think every SEC program wants Lonnie Alameda. You don't you, know, right. you don't think Link Jarrett's going to be a name to be talked Ooh. about. Right. So Mike Norvell, we already had to fend off the SEC from them. So the, it may not be that bad right now. But when you are fifty million dollars a year behind Florida, who you Jeez. have to play all the time, and and they can take your coaches, or, or the biggest thing, if we move to a a revenue sharing model where now yeah. the schools are paying players, yeah, that's fifty oh, million. God. That's that's like an extra fifty million on your salary cap every year that's if you right. want to relate it to the that's NFL. Right. So like that is a massive difference. So that's I a think huge that, point, right? And so like I think at the end of the day. People might think we argued for one side or the other. It sounded like we, you know, made a heavy argument for the SEC. I'll, I'll give it that. Someone even commented that on the poll. Like, you sound like you're pro SEC. And I said, well, you know, I just think there's more to the whole picture. That's right. But it all boils down to getting out of the ACC and getting into right. either one of these conferences. That's really all that matters because right. if you don't, you're going to get lapped financially. And, and again, right. the playoff spots are, are disproportionate now. So I think that is really what matters at the end of the day is just making it out into either one. We just kind of wanted to have a, just a little, you know, fun discussion back and forth with with the advantages and maybe disadvantages of either one. Because I think when you look at the SEC, when you dig into some of the numbers and when you you kind of take the hatred of the ESPN blinders off, you can That's see right. why it's a big draw. You can see why it would be fun, you know, to play over there against the best brands, you know, to have right. all that that that. Um, athletic cachet, so to speak. But I, I still think the Big Ten is the most likely landing spot and probably the better of the two as far as long term. Yeah. But, you know, again, I just want to drive home that neither one of us like the SEC, neither one of us like ESPN. But it, we also don't care which conference we end up in as, as, long as, it's right. not the, as long as it's not the ACC. And that's really, really the biggest point of this whole thing. And so, you know, like you said, Florida State's going to compete in both. And, and I think the right. funnest aspect to think of is what could Florida State do with that SEC Oof. and that Big Ten money? Because, you know, we just have been kind of hamstringed by that ACC payout for, for right. quite a long time. And so I'm really excited to see what they do, what, if they get out, and where they end up. Right. And I'll be happy in either one. Like, I'm, you know, again, right. I, I'm, I have to drive seven hours to Tallahassee. So that's right. I'm driving, I'm driving either way. I mean, but, you know, that's right. I, I would love well, to go to Happy Valley. I would love to go to all those stadiums. But, man, it's just, it's just getting somewhere else. Right. And, and and my last point is this. For those of you listening on podcasts or watching on YouTube, just think about this. Florida State dominated basically from 1985 to about 2003-ish, okay? So 14 years of, of, of incredible domination in some give or take. They did that with, the, with not very much money. Yeah. They did that with not very much money. Imagine Florida State. With this coaching staff, this administration, and that kind of money, right? My goodness, right? What because could Florida State do again? Florida State is they do an excellent job of generating revenue off the field, yes. but it's still a young school compared still to the a blue young blood school. programs. So their alumni and booster base is just not quite what you have at other schools That's because right. that they had a hundred year head start or fifty year That's head start right. in, in some cases. So that TV money and stuff like that is where you make up that gap. And, and like That's you said, right. man, I, I think when you look at what Florida state could do with that money, I mean, I, I think it's what Georgia spends like $4 million a year on recruiting alone. And, and just I think alone. Florida state's just South of a million. So it's like, yeah, man, I mean, just think about the juggernaut that you could build if you had that kind of money. And so again, I, I think the heart of this conversation is the fact that, like you said, the house is on fire. The ACC is on fire. You know, maybe you can maybe you can grab a, like a dog or two or your favorite T-shirt on the way out if you bring Miami or so. Well, it's not your favorite T-shirt. Not um, your favorite T-shirt. No. Nope. You know, you can you can grab the toilet paper on the way out if you're bringing Miami. But you can you know <laughs> maybe you can grab a few things on the way out the door. But you got to get out of here, man. Regardless right. of of what it takes, you got to get out of here. And I'm fine with either one. I just think that it's sooner than later because that gap is going to continue to grow. That's right. And I think both have positives and negatives. That's the takeaway. That's right. But I don't think people should be mad or, or disappointed no. if you end up in the SEC. That's right. And, you know, I, I know some people said, like, if they get in the SEC, they're going to quit watching sports altogether or something like that. And I'm like, that's no, just they won't. Being, 
no, that's, they won't. You, you're just being extra. You know that's what I mean? Right. <laughs> right. That's like, right. Everybody said they weren't, bo- you know, everybody said, I'm not watching the Orange Bowl. And then it was like the most watched Orange Bowl in like five Correct. years. So it's like I ended up going to the Orange Bowl. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So like if Florida State's on TV, we're going to be watching. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, man, I, I think there's arguments for both sides. But I just thought this was fun to kind of get a pulse of the fan base. Yeah. See where everybody stood and, and put it into perspective with numbers and stuff. What maybe we want and what maybe the school yep. did. So. Before we get out of here, guys, those of you that voted in the poll or left your comments or or thoughts on the thread or in the YouTube, uh, you know, below for those watching on YouTube, those that dropped the comments, we appreciate your input on the poll. Yes. Again, we had almost 2,000 responses, so we wanted to really kind of get you guys involved in this show. Again, check out Alumni Hall FSU to get that new FSU gear. I don't think they're putting any ACC logos on it yet. So, I hope you know, not. Let's, so it, let's go ahead and right, hold off on that. <laughs> so if you get some new gear now, no matter realignment, like you don't have to sell sell it off and get some new gear. So, uh, you know, go check those guys out. Use code SPEAR to get 10% off. We appreciate you supporting those that support us. And like and subscribe if you watch watched this long. And let us know what you thought in the comments. So we appreciate everybody. Uh, you know, if you're listening on podcast form, we normally don't ask for this, but, you know, drop a review. If that's you right. enjoyed the show, Ray, it kind of helps us reach everybody else for, for fun shows like this. But, you know, that's going to be it, guys. We'll see how things shake out. But either way, I think we have two good options. We have two good dance partners. That's right. We just, you know, we got options. <laughs> we, just, we got options. Hopefully we got 99 problems, but a conference ain't one coming. Yeah, so, let's go. You know, so we'll see how we'll see how it plays out. But thank you guys for watching. And as always, we'll end with a go Knowles. Go Knowles.